I want to talk to you a little bit about international investment migration companies versus the Chinese ones. Because I've noticed that it's sort of two different worlds. You have China and then you have everywhere else. Right. China, yeah. Yeah, it's right? the only two countries in the world. China yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Hawaii. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so uh, part of the reason why uh, so many international immigration companies have a hard time finding suitable partners in China is that there are thousands of immigration companies, uh, some of which are long-standing and respectable, like Welltrend, uh, but others have been known to cut corners to make money. And it's hard to separate the two. What is your tip, first of all, to the IMC in terms of how do you separate the good companies from the bad companies? And what is your tip for international immigration companies looking to find a partner to, that they can trust in China? Okay, to answer uh, uh, your last question first, okay, I think uh, they can only need to find me. <laughs> <laughs> One tip I can give to um, lots of other uh, 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 people is that, uh, you know, if uh, foreign Im I international immigration consulting firms, they want to find a good partner in China, mostly you should go to find those who has been around for a long time, and in the same time, with a certain degree of, uh, is sizable, okay? Good size, it's important. Because, you know, if you go with uh, anybody, uh, you got a lot of connections, finally, you, you would uh, end up with uh, only those good ones, mm -hmm. or larger ones, mm -hmm. or long-standing ones. Yeah. So that's why lots of people, they, they do uh, regret it. Uh, later on, they said, oh, I should have uh, only select the better or bigger ones. Okay, so that's uh, one of the tips I can give. So what would you say then that uh, are some of the biggest mistakes that international migration companies make when they try to enter the Chinese market? Uh, don't be too greedy. Don't be uh, in a, uh, too much hurry. Okay, take things slowly because, you know, Building up the trust between you and your uh, partner is the most important thing. Okay, if you don't get uh, uh, a trust, you don't have business. It's the number one thing. Secondly, I think it's important to hire uh, a capable uh, Chinese-speaking personnel to help you. Don't step on others' territory. Mm -hmm. Some pe sometimes, you know, some people think they are smart. They are too powerful. They are too smart, and then they step into other territory. For example, let's take uh, uh, US. Some big regional centers, I say some, they want to, now everybody knows China is the largest market of the world. So some of the regions, regional centers, they go direct to China to find clients. Yeah. Okay, which is, I don't feel comfortable because this is our territory, mm. okay? Vice versa, I also don't, uh, uh, agree with some of the Chinese uh, agents. They go to some, uh, go to U.S. for example to open a regional center, mm. right? Which is bad. Which which means they don't respect U.S. territory. Right. As I said, you know, EB-5 is an American uh, thing. Let American run their show. This is my saying. So, which means greedy. <coughs> which also means some sometimes some international consulting companies, they forget it. They think that they can grab enough uh, prof profit, profit uh, from doing this, which is wrong. You always have to think some others' needs, okay? Only take uh, the part which belong to you. Don't take it all. If you take all, you'll get punished yeah. in the end. While we're on the topic of EB-5, yeah. uh, I'm wondering if you'd like to comment a little bit about the recent uh, Kushner affair uh, with the Xinze, what is it, Xinze? New Jersey, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, because the issue, as I understand it, is that uh, Jared Kushner, who is married to Ivanka Trump, uh, he is a senior White House advisor, but his sister, who belongs to the same family company, they are the ones developing this EB-5 project in New Jersey. And while at a conference in Beijing, 
she mentioned his name, and I think she went even farther than that. She may have actually indicated that she had, through family connections, she could, you know, as you say, zonation, that she had maybe some uh, influence over policy. Do you think that this type of name dropping uh, has damaged the reputation of the EB-5 program? I still feel uh, optimistic, mm. okay, because, you know, the president of U.S., Donald Trump, is the, uh, used to be the uh, real estate developer. So, and also his family and he, he himself used to use or are using, still using EB-5 money. So they know the, uh, the benefit mm. of uh, EB-5 to American society. They know that. Every year, the EB-5 program is maybe going to end. And every year, it doesn't happen. Every year, last minute, they get an extension. Now, again, this year, it's been extended until the end of September. Ronnie Clasco told me he thinks this year may be different. Uh, he thinks maybe there will be a, a higher level of investment required. Uh, what's your take on it? I think uh, this time, <coughs> since 2015, okay, has been extended many times. And uh, I think uh, this time will be final, or be last time of extension. So after September 30th, will be new legislation or regulation for sure okay. for EB-5. Either it could be ended without any, no more EB-5 or extend for five years. Okay, this is an uh, estimate. I think uh, most probably they will uh, extend the program for another five years. But the investment amount for the 500,000 uh, investment uh, will, will be changed or will be increased to at least 800,000 or even more, 1 million, 1.3, uh, 0.5, you know, you don't know. Yeah. Now, let's imagine a scenario in which the US EB-5 either closes or the price increases drastically. Where do you think that the demand from China will shift toward? What other destinations will they flow to instead? You should ask me why I'm here. <laughs> okay, that's why I'm here. Okay. Uh, this is the answer. Okay. You know, I think uh, Europe is one of the important uh, alternatives for Chinese to, to choose. You know, demand is there, okay? It doesn't matter U.S. or Europe, you know? They want to leave the country. They want to find a, a better place for their family future. So I think uh, as a possibility, we might uh, introduce some clients to other countries rather than only U.S. And now, specifically, which countries do you think? Uh, Malta is so popular, mm. and also in Europe. And also, we have been promoting uh, real estate related, uh, uh, like uh, uh, European countries' uh, pro projects for many years. We'll continue to do so. And also, another new country, Ar Ireland, is also a possibility. And uh, besides Caribbean countries? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is your answer to the Chinese clients who are concerned about getting a second citizenship? Because as we know, um, the Chinese authorities, they don't really recognize uh, dual citizenship. Now I know you used to be, have a Chinese yeah, passport. Yeah, yeah, but I've abandoned. You, you gave it up and became Canadian. Up. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, as far as you see it, uh, Will there be any changes on that front uh, in the future, or I don't do you know. think Chinese will have to choose uh, one passport over another? I think uh, for many years, uh, China will main, uh, remain one passport policy for many years, mm. for some political reasons. Yeah. Uh, some reason I could understand, a lot of people don't. I didn't understand it before, now I could, because you know, China is such a huge country with uh, some uh, Chinese are living out of China yeah. for a long time, especially in, in Asia, okay? If Chinese government allows, you know, due citizenship to be legal, yeah. it's, it, it will create a lot of problems. Yeah. It's very difficult for Chinese to, uh, government to make a new change. Yeah. I think I would say, I would see a continuous uh, uh, existence, existence of this uh, policy for a very, very long time. Okay. 
Uh, I want to bring the topic a little bit back to um, the market for immigration. Okay. And um, specifically, how you see the future of the industry developing in terms of business models. Mm -hmm. um, we know that recently there's been a move to more online platforms, uh, mm -hmm. sp uh, especially in China. Um, which, I mean, do you see some of the traditional business models dying out? And, uh, and if so, which new business models do you think will step up to, to take the place? I'm asking you about the natural selection, in a sense, of this market in China. Uh, you mean for immigration? Yeah. You know, I have a saying, many years ago, I used to attend a, a, a seminar, uh, and also on that seminar, I proposed a slogan, which is uh, uh, to pay enough respect to elders, but in the same time, uh, keep your curiosity to newcomers. This industry will never be replaced by uh, IT technology because it's too big uh, a decision to make, okay? Yeah. People want to come to you, okay? They want to talk to you face to face, okay? They don't want to make decisions on internet yeah. alone, yeah. for sure. However, in terms of uh, marketing technology, it's another story. We need to adapt ourselves to the new medias, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And, and how specifically are, are you using new media in your marketing efforts? Are you you're very active on WeChat? I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, WeChat. Uh, I belong to one of the first persons in this industry who forced our our uh, management team to use uh, WeChat many years ago. Okay. Okay. And WeChat's uh, website was set up in 1997. Okay. Well, okay. It's earlier. The than, internet was brand new. Yeah, yeah. it w w uh, was so new. Yeah. So I was very early to uh, to have things like this done. However. You know, uh, you know, visionary is not a problem for me. The, the thing is, how can I implement yeah, them, yeah, you know, yeah, a I more understand. efficient way? This is quite interesting when you say you opened your website in 1997. Yes. Uh, very few companies had websites back no then. No one. This yeah. is the first one in China. Right. I can tell you. Yeah. And uh, your, your company opened in 95? 1995, beginning yeah. of 1995, so yeah. two years after uh, my opening. So I'm wondering if you can tell me some of the, the major changes uh, in terms of trends and business models that have happened in those 23 years. Because obviously 23 years ago, the investment migration market in China looked very different. When I started, I started to do the business, most of our clients uh, were older than me. No, yeah, okay. most of the people are younger than me. <laughs> okay, okay. That's a big difference. Okay. And another thing is, you know, uh, many years ago when we started to do uh, investor in my migration in China, uh, lots of uh, most of Chinese applicants they don't have their uh, uh, documents qualified mm -hmm. uh, uh, from a, a Western point of view. Okay, yeah. we have to do a lot of uh, 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 polish. Uh, to, for their uh, documents and uh, let them education educate them to provide uh, how can they prepare uh, qualified documents yeah. it's so difficult but today it comes easier and easier you've seen Chinese immigration companies come and go you've seen some have tremendous success while others have gone up in flames uh, what do you think is allowed Welltrend to survive and remain one of China's biggest immigration companies for more than two decades? I think uh, one of the, you know, number one reason is luck. We need to have luck uh, to sustain in this society, okay? Uh, we do have luck, it's important. Secondly, I think uh, something to do with our philosophy. Now, uh, one of our major philosophy uh, is if the client don't win, we don't win, okay? We have to treat client always uh, uh, the best. This is uh, what we, we have done. For example, this time I came to Geneva to this IMC uh, conference. Can I want to uh, meet some new people uh, and to find some new opportunities, uh, new uh, good uh, investment immigration projects for our clients. This is very important. You know, I consider myself as a potential client. You know, if I'm satisfied, clients will be satisfied. So this Larry Wang, very thank you for coming today to see us. Okay, uh, it's, uh, I'm very happy to finally I have to speak some Chinese. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>